Hello, fellow nerds, and welcome to Nerd Doom, where the table explodes with random conversation about anime, games, and nerd culture in general. I'm Mike. I'm Addie. Hey, it's uh, it's been a while. Welcome to our show. It's actually not been a while because we actually recorded and actually have another recording within two weeks of the your, last one. Your your time spatial uh, perception there is a little off. Whatever. Your time spatial. Mm, I do watch Doctor Who. Whatever. Um, so, <laughs> hey, welcome to our uh, special Christmas special. Um, special Christmas special because it's super special. extra special. Special, special. Um, You're all special in me. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, me too. Uh, uh, we're going to try to focus on more of the Christmas stuff. And um, since the holidays are com- coming through, um, there has been, uh, over the years, quite a bit of like Christmas traditions and like certain things that, including like things that people like to watch. Uh, during during the time of Christmas or uh, things of the nature or sometimes really nerdy ner- uh, like really weird nerdy things that they might like to do like I don't know go hunt a pig <laughs> that's the thing uh, yeah um but yeah um so for right now we wanted to talk about a little bit of our list that we like to watch um or or try to catch catch on during the Christmas time throughout throughout the month of December uh what is your list uh, let's see. For things I like to watch or do? Uh, watch. Um, All right. I mean, if, you, if there's anything you like to do, then sure. Be lazy. But that's a, that's a daily occurrence, though. I but... think that's what everybody wants. <laughs> like, any person that does a solid, like, nine to five, just, like, he's like, I just want to chill. I just, just want to be here. <laughs> no, um, if, when I'm not panicking about family coming in town and, like, doing a mad dash clean of my house, I try to watch Polar Express. I know not a lot of people nowadays are like, oh my god, it's horrible, that, see, that animation is terrible, blah. I'm like, I don't care, I really like the story, and I think it's absolutely cute. I don't think that's my problem with the story. I just thought it was boring. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, I can see kid, that. I fell asleep on it a lot as a kid, so I, I, I can't really say too much about my, my interest. I mean, I can see that, but it, for me, I just thought it was cute, because like, I, I figured out at an early age that... Uh, Santa wasn't real, and if you have kids listening to this, he's totally real, kids. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <clears throat> but anyway, I figured it out early. So watching this, it kind of took me back to that feeling of, oh, but what if he is real? So, but I thought it was really cute, and the music in it was pretty fun. The, the, I won't lie, the animation for it, there are part scenes that you're just like, because you can see where the errors were, especially when the elves are out and dancing, because you can see, like, one where they're just literally just spinning in place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, what else? I think you might agree on this one. Uh, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas? Um, the original, yes. Yeah, so me. I have I have down, I like to watch either the animated version, the original, or and I occasionally like to watch, watch the live action version. I've gotten a little out of it just because my sister, when it first came out, made us watch it every single time. Yeah, and if you're if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're not talking about the second uh, version, the second version. The one that just came first. out, no, we're talking about uh, the Jim Carrey, yeah. Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Uh, the thing that gives... Uh, we got to watch it at work. Reason. made me happy. <laughs> so I got that off my checklist for the year. The only thing I get out of the, the Jim Carrey version is... Uh, and we meant, and I was saying this earlier uh, over text. Uh, what that show has given me based like off of the animation is that the Whov- the the people of Whoville like, do not deserve a Christmas for me. No, they don't. They're awful people. Like, they are awful and super superstitious. And Mayor Mayhew can go material, like, very much in the materials. That is one thing I do I do like of the Grinch. It, it really focused on the the unnecessariness of materialism when it comes comes to Christmas and the yeah. superficial feelings of, like, up-topping the other with the light show battles and things of that nature. Yeah, and you got Cindy, Su- Cindy Lulu who's all like, well... <sighs> What is Christmas? Because she's starting to lose faith in Christmas, if you will, right. that, that Christmas spirit. And that's her, her, her whole dilemma. And when she finds the Grinch, she's just like, he's kind of feeling like I am. So this is why I want to go to. But I, I, I like it because it's funny. And I'm also a huge Jim Carrey fan when he wasn't acting weirder than normal. Uh, I, I, it doesn't make me less of a Jim Carrey fan. I know. I like watching Nightmare Before Christmas occasionally. Not all the time, but just like once in a while. It, but it's not going to be... It's either at Christmas or at Halloween. True. But not both. <laughs> you, have, you only get enough for one of it. And yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, and I watched a lot of it for Halloween, so I'm not really into it for the Christmas this year. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other things I really like to watch is occasionally I like 
I'm again history nerd here, so I like watching um, documentaries, and I really enjoy kind of watching any uh, specials about the World War One Christmas story. Oh, okay. When like they're out in the trenches, and then like the Germans, yeah, it's the Germans and the British, and some of the British right, guys are the... singing a Christmas song, and the Germans hear, and they start singing the same song in German, and then they kind of have like a temporary truce for the night for Christmas, and they all come together, they play, they hang out and enjoy, and then come sunrise, they shake hands and they go back to their trench to start right, during the trench killing wars. each other again. That's really, yeah, it's really an interesting idea. It was like, basically, like, all right, just for one night, one day, one hour, right? Was no, it? it was the entire night. It was the entire night, sorry. Yep. So for the, the entire night, just, just for this time, let's not... Be assholes. D- let's not shed any more blood, shed any more blood. And just enjoy Christmas. <laughs> yeah. They're now, I don't know about you, but Christmas specials, like, it, it could be for, like, shows that normally don't do anything with Christmas. I like them. I like, um... Futurama. Futurama's Christmas special. That I was love a good one. Christmas special. This is some of my favorites. I really enjoyed, uh, it came out a few years ago, like, two, two, three years ago, I think, uh, How to Train Your Dragon Christmas special. I never watched it. It was kind of cute for what it was. I mean, it was ridiculous, but it was cute. And I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I can't say I've ever watched it. Uh, it's not the greatest thing on earth, but it's adorable. Oh, is there anything else you had on your list in general? I do, but I think we wanted to save it for the oh, end right. portion. Right. So, like, at my list, and I'm not going to go too far into to any of them, this is, like, basically the entirety of all movies that I love to watch throughout all of December, if I possibly can. And so far, I've only watched Scenes one. of it? No, one. I've oh. only watched one movie so far. It's Die Hard. Uh, mm-hmm. Number one, mm-hmm. uh, that's mm-hmm. my usual mm-hmm. go-to Christmas, like on Christmas. You and every guy in the nation. Look, it's one of the best Christmas movies of all time. And not every guy, okay? There's plenty of women that wants to watch it too. Okay, all, fair. All ages. Uh, uh, Tokyo Godfathers. Uh, oh my God, we need to watch that one. Yeah, Tokyo Godfathers is probably one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. Yeah, and one of my a favorite lot of, movies in, in general. I don't have a lot of anime special Christmas ones because Japan doesn't really anime. celebrate Christmas like we do, so it's not the well, you, same. Well, they do, but there's not that. It's not like there's that many specials that goes around with it. It's not mm-hmm. like there, there's something that people like do that often. I yeah, mean, I mean, there's they're out there, and there's some that's there's some that's a thing, but it's more so that they're they're not. Yeah, they're just, no, there's just not that many. Uh, so next one is Batman Returns because it I don't remember does that have, one. Batman Returns, oh. Tim Burton version. Michael oh no, Keaton. yeah, I like that yeah. one. Yeah, Selena, Selena Kyle's in it. Yeah, remember this is that came Cat around. Catwoman version. Yeah, no, I like that one too. Yeah, that's around Chris. That's in the Christmas setting. It's, it's been one of forever my since I've seen it, so I forgot. Shame, shame. Never forget Michael Keaton. I kn- no, I don't forget that. It's just I haven't seen it in a while. Oh, it's one of my favorites. I know. Uh, Bad Santa because I like watching horrible crude humor for, for you can for, have that I'm, i was very I'm happy without it i was very obsessed with that movie when it first came out i was i thought it was one of the funniest things ever and i was like hey this is like a lovely family-like thing family-like uh, thing i mean it, there's a there's a sense of like family even though it's super dysfunctional and like hilarious and okay dumb, okay I and get lots it. of drinking uh, it's so stupid though <laughs> it's funny it's really funny uh gremlins uh, because remember, it's also holiday it themed. Is. It is. Yeah, is just remember that is also holiday themed. It is. God. Yeah, I love Glimmers of the Passion, and I watch it every time. Uh, Jingle all the way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh my God! I used to be. I it's was very so obsessed with that. Corny. Was it's corny. No, it is corny. It's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, but it's hilarious and it's it great. It is. It's one of the. I I think it's hilarious and I think it's great. And I watched it horribly amounts when it was when I was a kid watching it. I thought it was. One of the greatest. Uh, a Christmas story. Uh, because nope, I hate it. I, I don't understand why you hate it. Like, Cause it, it's, uh, I never was a fan of it. I think it's better than most, most stories because the actual feels more like a coming of age story, sort of. Uh, no, I'll take that, but I'm just not a fan of it. Like, I think it's overrated. I think it's great. I think it's nice, fun, funny, and kind of takes it deadpan, like... Uh, more of a down to earth kind of situation, more realistic, so real like this is how kids kids have in Christmas. It's crap. At least during that time. <laughs> yeah. I mean during that time. I mean, yeah, some of the some of the parts in there are really outdated. 
I will say this: the movie is outdated. Um, well, it, but it's still a classic. There's a lot of jokes and a lot of stuff that like you wouldn't relate to today in terms of what's happening, like the la- the leg lamp. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, but it's still funny for I some reason. I think it's funny. And then Home Alone. Uh, oh God, no! Yeah, we got to watch that at work too. Yeah. I got about halfway through right when the thieves were starting to and that's, hit the house. Yeah, and that's the one movie I already watched was Home Alone because um, I I just randomly watch it. Um, the second one is still the best. Yes, as a movie, yes, I think the second one is a is a better movie. But Home Alone one is always going to have that title of "This is what created the franchise." I don't know. Like, I think I still rather watch the Home Home Alone two like instead. Yeah, just because I think I think uh, I think I, at least to me, I don't know the numbers or anything on nature. I thought it was I thought Home Alone two was way more popular. It was, but maybe like, I think it was because it was a little better made. Maybe or the fact that yeah, I don't know. You have more money with like the success of Home Alone. Yeah. But I was watching when I was watching the Home Alone at work between phone calls and stuff. It was um, <laughs> there are certain scenes that I'm just like he'd be dead, he'd be dead. That wouldn't be allowed. He no okay <laughs> like like it was it was typical like early '90s things that like kids could get away with back then and parents can kind of get away with back then. Today you look at it and you're like, "Oh no." Like there's a scene where he crawls up into his brother's um shelves to yeah. grab the money and the shelves just collapse on top of him along with the uh spider tank or yeah, the spider tank. Mm-hmm. That should have injured him far more <laughs> than it did. Yeah. But I'm like, "Okay." I think uh, I think one of the biggest things about it is like the first thing I think is like, man, these are awful parents. To no, like, they really are. Not, not but once, but twice. <laughs> forget, forget your child. Yeah, well, three. Uh, three no, times three is not the same. Yeah, three, three is not the same. No, yeah, uh, twice. Kid. In the first one, like you see how crappy they treat him, and you're like, oh, now yeah, you're worried like, about no, him. Yeah, no one's. Yeah, it's like kind of one of those things. Is like, well, who am I supposed to root for in this situation? Yeah. Part of me didn't want to root for uh, the kid. In any way, because like I was like, wow, he's just a, he's just a little bastard. Like <laughs> up until he starts fighting the um, the home invader, then you're rooting for him. I think you're that's like, why. Yeah, get him. <laughs> I think that's why I like the second one better too, because I like the kid better. Like, yeah, and like the kid, I was like, yeah, but you're kind of a douche. Like I don't see a reason of like really like rooting for you. At least in the second one, this is generally a person that like. Well, I'm stuck. I'm gonna use what I got. I like in this the situation. second one more because it seems more plausible somehow, other than just waking up and forgetting your kid. It's they got yeah. separated in an airport, and he went on what he thought was the correct plane. They went on the wrong one, or something happened. He because he was following someone who looked like his dad. Right. That seems more plausible to me. The only thing that the only thing that was kind of weird, and it, it does make sense in things of that nature, besides the fact that Donald Trump was in it, um, <laughs> is that. Um, uh, the part like right, right when he's getting it, um, he's getting the room, and mm-hmm. like it was straight up credit card fraud. Oh my god! They, like, they didn't even question like, that. Oh. No, they questioned it uh, at the very end or near the middle when it was too late. Yeah, like, it was already too late because that's at the time that's how you did credit cards. You just like did that swipe thing. Yep, and you just pick the numbers, do it later. But you're supposed to pick up on like certain situations before like a before. random kid handing you a credit yeah, card. Yeah, like you would mm. it, it would raise red flags. But yeah, I can understand I guess in the nineties that there was a little bit more trusting trusting of what like they do. And yeah, nowadays like, it's oh well more. this kid definitely needs help. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well well we'll just get to him later. Blah 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 all that stuff. Speaking of which, do you have you watched the commercial? Which one? The commercial that they I think I don't know if it was Amazon or or I don't know if it was Amazon or Google, it was Google Assistant. And d- do you know this? Macaulay Culkin came back to play has I an older version of I saw something about that, but himself. I never I never actually got to see I, it. I watched it immediately as I watched it. It's literally like him doing like the same scenes, essentially some of the same oh, scenes, no. like him eating mac- macaroni and cheese on the table table while he's like asking like Google Assistant to do certain thing, to do certain things that like kind of parry the plot. And then uh, he's jumping on the bed to do certain stuff, and then like the the truck comes in, the van comes in, yeah, like at the front, and he's like, "Hey, uh, like put on like uh, I forgot the person, I, I always forget the dude's name, but it was basically his name's like operation mode, uh-huh. and it was just a bunch of lights that turned on, and like it turned on certain parts, and it was making references to certain traps that was com- that was on there, oh my and gosh. then like all you hear is like 
someone obviously in, in do an impression of Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci's voice, like, and be like, let's get out of here before we get found. And it just sh- drives off. That's, <laughs> that's like that. And that's the thing. It's Google assistant. It's kind of funny. And it's kind of, I, love to watch that now. I find it weird that he decided to even come back to this. Cause he was very adamant about the fact of how, like the show kind of ruined him. Like he feels like, like I, his early times, he felt like the show kind of ruined him. Maybe it was just a drug stalking. Who knows? I think it was the, that he looks so much healthier now. Well, yeah, he looks a little better, yeah. I mean, yeah, but um, before, but you know, yeah, I really enjoy watching that at work, and I really appreciate it. I don't know if they did it just to make us feel better about ourselves or make give us a holiday special. That because one of my coworkers was like, "Yeah, I fussed and whined about it enough, so they put it on." I'm like, I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, who knows? I mean, that's that's the case. But, uh, let's see, I think one of my other holiday specials that I really enjoy, or, or were you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, I think we're <laughs> I don't have anything else on the list. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, no, I, I have crap tons on the list. It's just those are the, the main I ones? need to watch this 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 month or I'll, like, I need to. <laughs> I need to watch at least, like, 50% of those, and then, and then I will not be in a rage of death. <laughs> sure, uh-huh. But, no, I think my other favorite one, and a lot of people, like, like to watch it if they're in that fandom is the Doctor Who Christmas specials. Yeah. I really enjoy them. Going back and watching the 10th Doctor Christmas special, like when he first regenerates into the 10th Doctor, it's really funny now. Back then you're like, what? Now I'm watching it, I'm like, robot Santas with horns that explode. What? what? That makes sense. Totally. The spinning Christmas tree of death made me laugh so hard when I first that saw it. That is probably one of the most ridiculous like things I've ever watched. He um, just randomly pops out of bed and whee, Christmas tree explodes. That's just why. <laughs> Yeah. My my favorite will always be the the um the Nick Frost Santa. Oh my special. god, that was like a because mind trip. Nick Frost as Santa was one of the best things I could ever have. Oh, when they I know. first announced it, like in there, I was like, ah. And this was like around the time I think it was it was Capaldi's Doctor, mm, right? No, uh, sure? Tenet. Is it not no. Tenet? Not Tenet. No. Smith. It was Smith. Matt, was it Smith? Ooh. Okay. Or did he come? No. Oh my Unless God. he came in twice. Like, I thought it was Capaldi's. Now I gotta look it up because my poor brain's like, wait, what? Yeah, I could have sworn it was Capaldi's. Nick Maybe. Frost <laughs> in Doctor Who Christmas special. It was Capaldi, you're right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. But no, that like, was a mind bender. It was really good, but it was a mind bender of a sh- uh, episode. Yeah, because it was like Inception. Because it was a dream within a dream within a dream. With a, yeah, it yeah, was, it was. And I thought it was a great episode. It was real Witten. Uh, Nick Frost's Santa was hilarious. Oh yeah, I love him. Like he was, he was just Santa is an asshole. Uh, Essentially. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how I think it. Anyways, I think Santa is actually an asshole. I mean, when you have to deliver. Like he, at, at some point, like he's just like, million, nah, mate. To seven point four million kids, billion kids. Like at that point, it's like I, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but no, I really enjoy the Christmas specials. Now, oh, I'm trying to figure out which one's my favorite. The one where um, Matt Smith regenerated, I thought was pretty interesting because they literally were in a town called Christmas. And oh, the like the giant like hour long special. Right? Yes, uh, that was like this entire sense was like you already knew he was going to regenerate this episode, but it was like let's make a big deal out of it. Kind oh, of oh yeah, oh yeah. He literally went out with a bang. Literally. And then, um, this year's different, though. Oh, yeah, we don't get a uh, don't get Christmas, a Christmas special. special. You get a New Year's special. I think it's smart. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many Christmas stories you can I think tell. That, well, to be fair, to segue, segue into the, this particular Doctor anyways, I think it has a lot to do with, like, the how this particular Doctor and the team around, team around it and the head writer and everything in that nature is taking um this show and trying to completely take it into a different direction. Yeah. Um I mean Which makes sense. And I don't mind it, but it's kind of been like, well, you got the Christmas special, and it's almost like a tradition, but now all of a sudden you don't have that. So well, I was a little tra- bummed. Well it was a tradition because un- like there was there was always a Christmas special. Like, yeah, and I'm kind of bummed that this year I won't the be able to watch of... a Doctor Who for Christmas. Yeah. I mean that's fine. 
I mean, I'm not, that I'm just not gives you more time and, to watch other things. Because, yeah, I'm not going to sit there and be like, why am I... But I'm just kind of like, oh. Oh, she will. She'll just sit in the corner. You'll just sit in the corner. <laughs> just see me in a corner rocking back and forth. Just, just watching, like, Christmas, Christmas tree spinning. Death Christmas, by Christmas tree. <laughs> death by Christmas tree. Death by Christmas tree. Uh. <laughs> speaking of, so, speaking of the doctor and new direction. So, we have a new doctor as of this year of Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. And also comes with a new team, a new head writer, who's who was the head writer of Broadchurch, which... Happens to be Jody Whitaker was also on Broad Church. Yeah, and uh, David Tennant, which and, is nice. Yeah, and, and David Tennant. Tennant's already been like. Apparently, I love the story he tells about how they told him who the new Doctor was going to be. Because according to him, he was just chilling, and um, they got a hold of him. I think the director from Broad Church got a hold of him. And was like, hey, so you know, I got I got the head writing for Doctor Who, right? And he goes, yeah, great, it's awesome. He goes, do you want to know who the new do- who new Doctor is? And he was like, oh yeah, totally. So he's like, they're like, all right, hang on. So they're on the other line. And when they come on, you'll know. And he's like, what? And they're like, no, no, don't worry. You'll know. And so they switched the line over. And he's like, hello? And she's like, hello? And he's like, hey! So it's just so great. So, yeah. And so he, he's, and he's already been like, no, she's going to be perfect. And, of course, Smith and Capaldi are just like, yeah, no, she's fine. She's perfect. And I agree. I love her. Yeah, I think she's great. I think she definitely is exactly what it needed. Um, a new twist into like what it was and not mm-hmm. making you to feel stagnant with the same type of people. And it doesn't uh, feel like it's a drastic change. I mean, yeah, it's different gender, but essentially the way she's played it, it still feels like the doctor. I still feel like there's like some parts I feel I feel like there's many parts of it still like the same type of doctor as oh, it yeah. usually is. Like her extremely overdrawn way of, of using, using her sonic, sonic screwdriver. Mm. Yeah, extend <laughs> arm. No, my, what I find really interesting is like there's, I don't know if this is the writers or this is the actor kind of playing into it, but there are certain parts of it where I get a feel that some characteristics of past doctors come in and you get that kind of feeling of those, that characteristics like the upbeat kind of <laughs> of the eleventh doctor and the kind of like back and forth from the with the tenth doctor kind of like doing different things. Um, not so much from Capaldi yet. No, no, I because Capaldi's was very grumpy. <laughs> no, well, Capaldi's was also like an angry kind of person. Angry Scotsman. Yeah, just angry Scotsman. <laughs> uh, which I again I enjoyed. I said many of times that Capaldi has instantly became one of my favorite doctor just because like his really changed like like how like made a, a situation where i was like all right this feels way more down to earth there's way more serious yeah. tones that's coming into it which i thought that i thought that was the only time it was going to happen but man there are episodes that are just like all right we got to hit this at home like real hard mm-hmm. like the second episode rosa parks um just the fact oh that they were God, willing to go so good yeah, the fact that they were willing to talk about this outside and this is outside of 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 UK. English stuff. This yeah. is America. Like, just understand this is American history, like, straight up, and they're diving into this and diving out of heart how And you have it was. two characters who are of color. Yeah. So... And I think I think it did really well of, of not necessarily, like, talking about the fact that it was of color, but how it was in the time in the times of Rosa Parks and why it led to the way it led. They even took the time to, like, really put in, put in the part, even though it was through exposition of the Doctor, talking about, like, what this led to this, and why did this happen this way? And and, and they didn't necessarily why they have to make the decision, make the actions that they have to act, make sure happen, so that she can do, do have what she's that supposed event to do. can happen essentially. Yeah, yeah, and I liked because like that episode, it wasn't necessarily them doing anything per se; it was more or less preserving that history. Yeah, which is great. And then you get um, other parts where <laughs> she's all like. Remember, on the witch hunting one, she's like, remember, we can't do anything about it. There's nothing we can do. Jumps in. You said we couldn't do anything. I changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, it was just like, nah, this pisses me off enough. That right there, when that scene happened, I was like, oh, there's a doctor. <laughs> well, it's, you know, what's funny is that, like, I think a lot of it has to do with the changes of history. There could be somebody that argues, like, well, why would she do something like in this in this nation in Salem and not do it? Is well, it, it Salem? In, no, no, it not was Salem. in England. It's, it's England. Yeah. Um, um, why would you do something like this in this particular situation and not do it in Rosa Parks? And I was like, well, you have to think of the history of it. Like, back then, at that point, like, there was not as much written history. Uh, no, what it was. This is what it was. So, with the Rosa Parks, that is what is known as a fixed point in history. Right. For the Doctor Universe. Yes. And so Doctor knew, you can't change this. If you change this, 
bad juju's going to happen. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Where with the Witch Hunter episode, they literally walked in there and they said, oh, we're in the village of blah, blah, blah. And Graham was like, I've never heard of this place. And there, and even the other two characters were like, I've never heard of this place. Well, that's why I was saying that there's not a, in in that particular. And situation, it wasn't because it wasn't written a... history. It's because if you remember at the very end that the king's all like, let this place name be erased from memory and from everything. This place doesn't exist. That's basically saying there's no history of it. Exactly. Like, that you're trying to say. It. That's what I was getting at. Oh, okay. But I mean, you're right though. Like, it's so in that like, case, the doctor could interfere. Yeah. <laughs> like you, it was that, basically that was this, this weird inside pocket where like you can just create create your own thought process of what mm. may have happened during that time. Yep. Apparently it was aliens that just was imprisoned in, in, the, I earth, love, in the earth. Yeah. I really love. Uh, before we continue, well, if you have not watched any of this Doctor Who, spoiler alert, sorry, this is a little late, but oh well, who cares? Watch. Should have watched them by now. They're all out. If not, shame, shame. Continue. Anyway, but no, I really enjoy some of the jokes that they put out with the doctor, and of course, being the doctor's ca- the character, the doctor as a character, I'm trying to get out here, has always been male, obviously, except for the parody episode. If you ever man- managed to catch that, it's kind of hard to watch because of how silly it is, but it's funny. It's, um, it's really ridiculous. It really is. But you get to the point where she, the doctor herself, Jenny Wicker's doctor. She's trying to do stuff, and being a woman, they kind of either ignore her or kind of just brush her off. And <laughs> she makes a comment at one point. She's like, when I was a man, this was so much easier. And I was like, yep. And then, like, the joke about pockets in the entire, like, first two episodes. Oh. <laughs> ah, pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, her entire joke about that, I was just like, hee, hee, hee. Because she has a fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Because the pockets in the out- in women's outfit are ridiculously short. All right, let's delve a little bit to like the uh, more of the materialistic parts of it. Um, how do you feel about her outfit? I'm a little thrown off by it, but then again, like the more I looked at it, the more I'm like, no, that's a doctor. You know, part of me was like, I thinking, mean, if, this if was they like, can pull off the Technicolor dream coat they did back in the '80s with the Eighth Doctor, Eighth Doctor, right? no, oh, fifth no, doctor. Seventh, seventh, seventh Doctor, doctor? Seventh okay. Doctor. Uh, so, so that's the first thing I was thinking See, about. That was the seventies. That was definitely what I was thinking about. Was the seventh Doctor, and I was like, "Wow, this is as ridiculous as this." Yeah, but um, not as much. But at the well, same the, time, like what, the more I looked at the outfit, the more I was just like, "That's actually kind of cute." Well, it is cute, but like I think the I think the I thing love is, her jacket. It's though. not about whether it's not about the um, you know like the Technicolor or anything of nature. It's just how odd like the combination, things, the combination of things. Yeah. Like, all right, I got rolled up. Uh, capris or whatever, and and then I have suspenders, suspenders with, with a, a rainbow blue, shirt with a with a shirt with a blue shirt that has like a yellow strip or whatever. It's a it's a it's like a dulled rainbow, dull strip. rainbow, right? Um, like one stripe. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. No, but it is like yeah, no, yeah, just straight across. It's like there. one stripe strip of the rainbow rainbow, and then you have this elongated like obviously beautiful not jacket. I jack, want that jacket. jacket. The jacket's great. Uh, but it's just, it's like unnecessarily big. It has a hood. It's like, whoa. It's because of the pockets. Remember, she was just like, pockets. She needs, she needs, she needs pockets, okay? Every, every I, All the doctors need for, pockets. I feel for every woman who has pants and don't really have there, pockets. There was a, um, it's kind of a running joke about pockets with the doctor. Mm-hmm. Mostly because, yeah, he does need that. But there's, um, I don't know if it was with the 10th Doctor or it was a little bit further back where one of the doctors, ha- he has his jacket and he's going into his pocket and he just keeps pulling stuff out. And so they're like, oh yeah, it's an instrumental pocket and he just keeps pulling stuff out. <laughs> like not like Mary Poppins bag, it just keeps pulling stuff out. Oh man. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I'm having fun with it. So that's as much as I can say right now. I'm um, looking forward to that. I, I kind of rather enjoy that there's not been as much said about the upcoming New Year special other than small little, oh, something's going to happen. And that's about it. Well, the BBC is just like um, They're cracking Marvel. down on that. BBC is just like Marvel in terms of like, man, do, do, we are super, super hush-hush about everything. Oh, yeah. BBC has like, gotten like locked down. Like, I won't they say got, They've got to bad. a point where you'll, if you if anybody sneaks anything out, there's going to be a fine. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say they're as bad as Marvel because, like, yeah, like mm. you can get in trouble real <laughs> that's hard. That's because Disney for for stuff. And uh, no, that's just Marvel. Oh, okay. Like has like Disney. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Disney has stuff stuff to do with it. I'm legal. I will leave th- parts of it, but Marvel's been really the ones that's been keeping things shut. And Kevin Feige 
is like very, very adamant about that. Because Which like, I'm okay with because I cases, don't necessarily want to know what happens yet. Well, most of the time, like unless you're like super top grade, you don't even get really a script. Mm. Like unless you're like Robert Downey Jr. and flipping Kevin Feige and and like some and two like and the Russo brothers and that's about it. Yep. Like in like there's like a collective few that like can get certain certain things for the sake of like not revealing all this information out to certain ways. Yeah. But no, it's it's stuff like that that I've been really enjoying and I'm looking forward to more of her stuff. Now I don't know if it's a rumor or if it's confirmed, but there's not gonna be any more episodes until twenty twenty. Mm. I'm kinda hoping that's not the case. Like, I can see if there's going to be episodes, like, late 2019, just because, like, film and production. And plus, I'm pretty sure Jodie Whittaker's on other projects, which is why that might be the case. I mean, it's possible. Um, it did, it really depends. It, I don't know, because it, since this is a whole new team and how they do things with this show might be completely different than they did before. Right. So, but so I also don't want don't them to take ha- too long of a break, because I feel like if they take too long of a break, that fandom is... I mean, if we can hold on for a year for her new stuff, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying... Gonna, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I don't think waiting a whole year for for more Doctor Who content is going to ruin the fan base. Like, you, I don't think that's going to lower the fan base. You don't think so? No, because BBC has did so much time to, like, hype up, like, this new Doctor for so long. And the fact that people were just stuck with it this much and you got that much viewership, and it's been a long time since until then, I think they'll be fine. I think when you when you literally do nothing with it, like, you don't even put out information or like maybe a teaser of something then yeah you might have something but yeah everything's everything in 2018 has been built up on hype okay yep and essentially that's that's how you you get people interested in your product like i mean i don't know how many things that's been like perfectly set just because of the fact that it's like hey i <laughs> hey here's this thing get super hyped on it oh oh yeah so but no i really really enjoy her i like the characters the, uh, except for, oh my God, what's his name? Ryan, like yeah. he's okay. Ryan's a <laughs> Ryan's a douche. Um, well, I, mean, I he's think cocky. It, he's just you know, like, part eh. of me, part of me is like trying so hard to like be like, yeah, he's a douche, but like he kind of has a reason to be. Like he's just angry. Like it's not, it's not like it's not like he's being a douche to be a douche, but he's just angry because he lost his grandma, his grandmother. Yeah. So like. I can under I can understand his. So he's taking his anger out. Kind of I like think on he everyone is. Else. I think he's seriously taking his anger out and just have. He's had less of a optimistic view because of it. My only thing is like they gave his character a disability, which it isn't a major disability per se. This is a disability that kind of gets in the way of some some cases. So, yeah, they mentioned it, but it never actually does. Yeah, but it, it's so the the problem was is that it only really comes up in the first part of it, and it's supposed to be him like kind of growing out of it. But I was like, okay, that's cool. He kind of grew out of it because of this happening. He tries to get better, <laughs> but it seems like he just it seemed like it kind of just go. They randomly mention it back as if it's supposed yeah. to be like a, a random in, like interference. It's like that doesn't really do it. He's jumping yeah. into a shoot. Like, yeah, what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, and like he mentions it the last time I tried this, I broke my foot or I hurt myself. Yeah, and well, then like he lands perfectly fine. You're like, I think it's, I think it, ha- I think it's one of those like unnecessary like con- like conversation like kind of yeah. situation filler filler conversation just to get something like. Funny How or, the heck like, does Yaz still have a job? Like they mention she's a police officer, and then that's it. She's has she gone back onto the force? Has she? Well, no, 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 like. It's another one of the situations where I know that it mentions that, like, they don't just go, like, every single time, you know? Yeah. Like, there's the same, like, situation, like, every other doctor has it. They go back in the, the same amount of time, like, they usually are, like, when they left. Mm. And then, like, when they go back, they're, like, doing certain other thing. They're doing their okay. various things. I would love to see an episode where Yaz is on duty and, like, she notices something's up and she gets a hold of the doctor and is like, hey, can you come help me get this or fix this? Well, we already have two things that had to do with her family, so. Ooh, uh, yeah, true. But those are the spider. The yeah, spider. Well, the spider one we got. You know, you're right. You're right. Because no, her spider mom. Spider and and the thing about her. Her, her grandma. Her grandmother. Which oh my god, that one made me cry. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it was a good it was a good episode. It was so. I was like sad. sitting. I was like, wow, I completely forgot about this this issue between <laughs> between the two yeah. when they just split, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. 
it's awful. Yeah. Another one of those situations you can't mess with the timeline. Yeah, you can't because then you're just going to mess up your own timeline. Yeah. Well, not even just that, but there's a there's a lot of other issues. Oh, yeah. That come up with that. Well, yeah. But no, it was – in the monster that you thought was supposed to be the bad guy it turned out to be like, mm, we are preserving this now. We're, we're, we're doing this. So I thought that was an interesting twist. It was interesting. Um, <laughs> I loved and hated the – the episode where uh, what's his face come back comes back. They're the I guess the main villain of this. Oh, the final arc. episode. Yeah, yeah of this arc. Uh... I loved it and I hated it at the same time. Same. So like I really liked it because it was really good. It was really well written. There was a lot of parts that I really thought was cool. Everything that had to do with Graham was awesome. Oh my god, um, he had every holy, right to be out for revenge. Everything about him was like, yeah, I would totally be the exact same way. I love the end though. Like he's he like, comes in and she's like looking I'm like, did you? And he's like. I couldn't do it, but I shot him in the knee. <laughs> <laughs> I did shoot him. <laughs> like, She's just like, uh, he's like, he's fine. <laughs> I love that. I was like, I did shoot him though. Like, just say, just want to put it out there. I did shoot him. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I would be like. Especially like, literally it's the episode right after, like right after he gets to literally see, see her again. In the pocket universe. In the pocket universe. And it's like, nope, I can't keep you. I was like, yeah, I'd just be pissed. I I know like and like suddenly existence of this guy's back up again. No, I nope nope. This dude's dying. And I love how like um, Ryan was like, "Don't do it. You can't do it. Just don't do it." And he's like, "No, no." But then he comes in and goes, "No, I'm going to help you like put this guy in stasis." Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, after that episode, I think that was when Ryan was better for me. Yes. Because like, I think like Ryan had to like deal with the fact that that might come back up again. And he had to learn that like. I would have in his own way of loss. I would have really, really liked to have delved more into the two characters that were being used by the bad guy. Yes and no. I feel like I got too much. You think? I I don't know. I, they just seem like they just seem like an unnecessary in like NPC for the uh, sake of the story going along. Fair. Because like that was cuz again, the only reason they're there is just because of their powers. Like that had nothing to do with like the type of person they are or where their personality done stuff. No, it's just that they're powerful people and they are needed to 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 be a device mm -hmm. to be a device for the plot. Can we take a moment to reflect on the fact that no angels, no Daleks. Nothing. I think that's the smart, and again, that's the other thing well, I yeah. said that this has been the smartest way of trying to delve away from it, try to create different ideas. Even though there is a sense of the monster of the week kind of situation, spiders, uh, which again, but th those weren't necessarily monsters per se; they were just genetically ge genetically altered spiders. Yeah, but the, it, I think the ongoing theme, and uh, even then, what the ongoing theme has been this entire time is the Doctor is very pacifist, like compared. To like, a point. More so than before. Like, well, yeah. Like, she, this time she goes out of her way to, like, tell, to, to get other people to not do it. Yeah. Because, like, she doesn't, like, the previous doctors don't usually do that. Like, they don't go out of Because they were way. mad. Or, no, even then, like, there were some, some cases they were like, yeah, I'm going to go kill this guy. And it, he would just, like, kind of, like, not think about it kind of thing. And, like, okay, I'm just going to be over here then. She would go out of her way. And then they... And and mainly it's just because of how they written it. They they make it so she goes out of her way to for everybody to take things in a non -pac pacifist way, non bloodshed in every way, no guns, none of that stuff. Well, she, the doctor's always been that way, but this one's a little bit more. Yeah, uh, and the predominant. way they've written it, it's predominant. It's yeah. super obvious that she's against it. Well, and I think they're also trying to point out that she's really against the, the doctor the, themselves is like really against guns. Well, yeah, and understand and understandable. Like in that in that sense, I just think like in the time of this era, I understand why this is more prominent than than it is before, especially in the year twenty eighteen. I didn't notice something. Uh, I rewatched the first episode with my parents yesterday because they finally caught up with all of Doctor Who. They just hadn't watched her stuff yet, so I was like, "Oh, here's the first episode." There's a scene a little bit after that you introduced, they introduce her and whatnot, and mm -hmm. they're, they've kind of gotten to the point where we're like, okay, we're going to go out and collect information throughout the town about this weird stuff that's been going on. And it was right before she passes out. And she's all like, oh, I suddenly feel really tired. And um, Grace is all like, oh, yeah, you did have a pretty bad fall. Uh, you should probably kind of lay down. And she's like, we should probably take you to the hospital. And she turns around and she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of that cracks me up because, like, he's the doctor, if you think about it, has like, some really bad experiences in the hospital. Plus, he's 
pretty much allergic to a lot of human medicine. Yeah. Like, it's deadly to him. Yeah. So. That's so, that's such a, uh, <laughs> it's such a weird thing where it's like, yeah, Earth, Earth is now still the problem, the problem in, uh, in, in like everything that has to do with aliens. It's like, how are we still sitting there putting, putting this idea that like humans are still like able to like beat aliens easily, easily with well, just their stuff? This time it wasn't so much like Earth was the problem. It was, you had, the spider things, it wasn't an alien thing. That was a genetic mutation and oh yeah, that's and just like humans. That's just radioactive. Uh, that's one stuff. human, which was my god. That was everything about that was like, hey, hey, we're not trying to say this is definitely a version of a certain somebody. Yeah, but we're definitely saying this is a version of a certain. We're making fun of a certain somebody. Yup. And then um, the only other thing you get really like Earth is being threatened is at the very end of the special where he's like, I'm going to get my revenge on everything yeah. and everyone that's yeah. ever. Oh no, me. I was just meaning like most of the time, like it's just so funny. And, like almost every show and TV show and, and movie where like there's aliens involved and humans have <laughs> some uh, humans have something about them that seems deadly for the aliens. I'm just like sitting there like, well, out of all the planets that's around here, <laughs> fair human, humans from Earth is the one that's okay. Sure, yeah, but yeah, I, I'm really enjoying Doctor Who. I can't wait to see more. Yeah, um, but other than that, uh, that's our episode for the night. Yeah, we're trying to keep it short because because uh, Christmas. More, yeah, because we want to do more Christmas things, and we don't like we don't like you that much. No, I'm sorry. We love you. Uh, we but, love you. Watches. Yeah, Listen. thanks for listening. And uh, remember, if you want to support us, uh, then share, subscribe, and leave a review. Uh, on iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Leave uh, us any uh, suggestions for future podcasts or anything you want to hear about, questions, things like that. We're always down for. Yeah, and remember, this will be our last episode uh, before the new year. Uh, so Merry Christmas, have a new year, happy holidays, and hope for a good uh, 2019. Woo! Have a good time, guys. Bye. <laughs>